Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. So in this video, we're going to design our animal sound screen. Our animal sound screen will look like this. At the top, we're gonna to have Jamie's amazing animal park, here in animal sounds. We're gonna to have touch the animal pictures below to hear the sound. We're gonna have a button to play all the animal sounds at once. Then we're gonna have various animals throughout. You're gonna pick 12 animals from the list of animal sounds that I have provided you. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna put this at the bottom as a guide. So first here, it says animal sounds. Remember whenever you create a screen, it's gonna be, whatever it's gonna be, the title is gonna be the actual name of the screen. I wanna change that, so I'm gonna come over here in properties, and I'm gonna say, Jamie's amazing animal park here, animal sounds. And you can see it updated in my emulator behind. The next thing I can see is I want my background image. So I'm gonna already have that tree of life background that I showed. There we go. Next thing I'm gonna have is I need a little home icon. I have some text that's next to each other and then I have all the animal pictures at the bottom. So let's just do the home icon. I could either use a button or an image. I'm just gonna use an image for now. And I'm gonna rename it IMG Home. In order to make it clickable, to act like a button, I need to select clickable. And I need a picture. So we're gonna go back to Google Images. I'm going to type home icon. And there's a bunch of home icons. Now remember, I'm gonna click on tools, usage right. I'm gonna do creative common license, which means I can Feel free to use it. So I'm gonna use, for example, this one, rather big. I'm gonna save that image inside of my animal park as home. Come back over here. I'm going to select picture, upload, and I'm going to find my home icon. You can see, again, I said it was gonna be big. I'm gonna change this to something like 50 pixels by 50 pixels. Now you can see from the picture, I want it to be in the center, so I'm gonna click on Animal Sounds, the screen, and I wanna update the properties. I do not wanna align my stuff left, I actually wanna align it center. Next thing you can see, I have a label, and that looks like a label, but it's actually a button. So I'm gonna drag out a label. I'm gonna call it LBL User Info, and I'm going to update it. Use whatever color you want. I'm gonna use, follow the screen like this. I'm gonna make it black. I'm gonna make the background color red. I'm gonna make the text yellow. And I'm going to simply say, touch the animal pictures below to hear their sounds. Press enter. You can see back here on my emulator, it is showing up. Uh, I'm gonna make it bold and italics. And now, it looks pretty good to me. I need to have a, looks like a label, but it's actually a button next to it. So I'm gonna drag in a button from user interface. I'm gonna rename this BTN Play All Animals. And I'm just going to change the text for now and say Play All. And I like it. I'm gonna follow, I'm gonna do red, and I'm gonna do white for the color. I wanna make this bold. So now, I have these two things, but I wanna put this like right here. And you see when you try to drag it, you cannot, like I can't even put this here. So MIT App Inventor does not work that way. You cannot position something by simply dragging it where you want it to be. You have to figure out your layout and use the appropriate layout components to get it to work. So again, on the left side, we need to find out something that can help us with layout. So it's not in user interface. Oh, look right here, we have layout. So select layout. This is how you're able to rearrange objects in the order that you want. This video is gonna be all about layouts and how we actually play with them, change their widths, do fill parent. So I want this guy to the left and this guy to the right, like our picture here. Um, do I wanna use a horizontal arrangement, a horizontal scroll arrangement, a table? Vertical arrangement, vertical scroll arrangement. Well, obviously to the left would be horizontals. We have two choices, horizontal arrangement and horizontal scroll arrangement. Later on, we will use a horizontal scroll arrangement in our animal draw part of this app. We're gonna have a bunch of different colors and you're gonna be able to scroll through the colors and select them. But for now, we only need the horizontal arrangements. I'm gonna drag that. It looks like a gray box, but up here, 
it's not showing up in the emulator. It's it's empty. If the gray is bothering you, you can change from default to none, and you'll see that's how it looks. So this is an invisible box. Whatever you put inside of there will be aligned horizontally. So I'm going to drag in my label. I'm there, and I'm going to drag in my button and just drop it right on top. And there we go. So I can, if I move this in the front, you can see anything you put inside of this horizontal arrangement is aligned horizontally next to each other. Now remember earlier we talked about parent. So Animal Sounds is the parent of everything. But now if you look at this horizontal arrangement is the parent of these two guys. I can minimize. These are now children of the horizontal arrangement. So whatever I do for my horizontal arrangement, I can set some properties and these guys, if I do fill parent, it will follow these rules from its parent. So I don't like how that looks there. I want my horizontal arrangement to go about 90% of the screen. So let's change the width from automatic to not pixels, but I'm gonna say 90%. So now, what is going on? We can see it's pushing the button off. It's not really working out that right. So I'm gonna click on my label and I'm gonna make my height feel parent. I'm gonna make my width feel parent. And you can see what's happening is my label was pushing this button off. My button is a certain size. When I do feel parent, that's saying take up the rest of the space inside of the parent. Well, my parent is 90%. So again, it's 90% of the entire screen. This says, hey, I need to be this big. And then since I did label fill parent, it says, okay, you need to be that big. I'm gonna take up the rest of the space. So now it looks a little bit better, but I want it to be all red. So how do I get this back be red? Well, we just did that. Remember the horizontal arrangement was gray as default. I'm just gonna simply change this color to red. And looks like this is centered. So I'm gonna click on my label user info and I'm going to center that. And there we go. Now we have all these different animals. You're going to pick 12 animals that you want to use in your animal park. Figure out what animals you want to use. On our class page, I've given you two places to find the sounds that you can choose from. I have my drive and I have free animal sounds. So I'm gonna click on free animal sounds. And you can see here, you can actually download a bunch of different animal sounds. Or if we go back to our class page, here is Mr. Gantz Drive. I'm gonna open up that. And you see I have a bunch of different animals. This is where we actually got our background music from before. And you can see cows, crickets, dogs, birds, everything. So you're going to simply download animals that you want, 12 different ones. So let's do that now. So I'm going to start out by, let's download my bear. And I already have these sounds, but just for, to show you, and let's just download one more from here. Let's do something different. So let's do monkey or lion roar. There we go. So I'm just going to save it over it. So I'm downloading two from here and I'm gonna download, let's just say the alligator from here, which is great. And I already have this, I'm just gonna overwrite it. And let's say the King Cobra. So again, you're downloading 12 different sounds and you're gonna find those animals that you want to use. So you're gonna download those sounds, but we also need the images. So I'm gonna to go to Google Images and I need a bear. So let's say I wanted this bear picture and again, I'm using Creative Commons license, which means it's free for me to use. If you're creating apps, you wanna make sure that you're not using copyrighted images. Again, to get to that, you select Tools, Creative Commons license. This is commercial licenses, which means you have to actually pay for the right to use those images. So I'm using Creative Commons license. I like this image. It is super big. I'm going to use my, I'm gonna use my screen capture tool. If you're on Windows, just do a search for the snipping tool and you'll be able to do the same thing. On a Mac, you're gonna press Control, you're gonna press Command Shift 5. This little, this window will show up and you're able to kind of select what you want. So I just want this part of the bear. And I also need a lion and I like this. So that's fairly small, 450 by this, but so I can simply right click 
and do save image as, just call it lion. I'm gonna save that inside of my animal park. I also need an alligator and a cobra. Now, if I'm using this from here, I actually can just simply right click this and do save image as, and you can see there's the alligator. And I can actually just use the same picture that they have here and right click save image as, and that is King Cobra. Or I can again look here in Google Images and do alligator if I wanted a different picture or a King Cobra. So the first thing you want to do right now is look through my sounds either on my Google Drive or on the freeanimalsounds.org website. And you're gonna choose 12 animals that you want to have in your Animal Sounds app. You're gonna download those sounds to your computer and then you need to also go find 12 pictures that you will use for your app. So again, pause the video and go download 12 animal pictures and 12 animal sounds from our class page. When you've downloaded your animal pictures and sounds, unpause the video and continue with developing our app. Now that you've downloaded your 12 animal pictures and sounds, let's finish the design of our app. So we're trying to get something that looks like this. These are going to be 12 images. So I am going to go ahead, go back to user interface, and I'm going to drag in my image. I know I have IMG lion. Then I'm going to make it clickable. I'm also going to upload the image of the lion that I have. It's really big. I can make it smaller for right now. Let's say 100 by 100. And I have another image. So IMG King Cobra. I'm gonna make it clickable. One of the pictures. I'm gonna upload. I'm gonna do select. And there is my Cobra or my King Cobra. I'll do this one. And for now, let's just make it 100 with by 100 pixels height. So, and my lion is not scaling correctly. So I'm gonna select scale picture. That way it fits to 100 by 100. And I'm gonna do scale picture on this as well. That way it fits to 100 by 100. Now, if you look at this, this is next to each other. So I want my lion and my cobra to be next. Well, it's not working, it's just switching them. Hmm. So what did we do earlier in the video? How did we get this to work? Remember, you can't just drag stuff to where you want it to be. You have to organize the layout exactly how you want it. So we have to go back over in our palette, look right here under layout and click on layout. I'm gonna select a horizontal arrangement. I'm gonna drag my lion in. Then I'm gonna drag my cobra right on top of my lion. And you can see they are inside my horizontal arrangement. Okay, so now we have this, and that looks fine to have them the same width and height, but if you look at my example, the line's kind of bigger, and this is smaller. And then this one, they're kind of swapped, and then these are equal. So we're gonna play with some sizing to make ours look unique. Versus having a 12 squares, we're gonna play with it. Well, how are we gonna do that? Let's go on horizontal arrangement. First, this is the parent of these two guys. So I want this to be 90% of the screen. So I'm going to select width, and I'm gonna do 90%. So again, if you don't like that background, even though you're not seeing it, if you look in your, if we look in our emulator up here, you're not seeing that background. But if that gray is bothering you in the screen, you can sim simply select this and do none. So now, do, do, do. how do I get this lion push all the way across? Hmm, let's think about it. So my width and height of my lion is 100 pixels. The width and height of my cobra is 100 pixels. So the horizontal arrangement is 90% of the screen. I want my lion to take up the extra space. So let's click on lion. I have 100 pixels. If I select fill parent, my parent is horizontal arrangement. It's going to take up the rest of the horizontal arrangement other than the cobra because the cobra says, hey, I need 100 pixels out of whatever my horizontal arrangement is. Yeah, you can take up the rest. So when we select fill parent, we get that kind of unique effect. Now, you also can see here, it looks like there's a space in between here, but when we look on the screen, there's no space. What if I like that effect of the space? 
Well, there's no way to do spacing from our horizontal arrangement. There's no like add space between objects. But here's my quick little way around that. If we click on user interface, I'm gonna click on label. I'm gonna put a label in between these guys. You can see the text for label once there. I'm gonna erase the text and you can see now it has a little spacer between there. If I wanted to make it a certain width or height, I can do width and change it to two. And you can see it gives it a little bit more spacing in there. If I wanted to do one pixel, or even if I did five pixels, that's a way where you're able to use labels to actually space out different items. And I'm going to just rename this LBL spacer one. So I know that's a spacer. So now let's just design the rest of our blocks and then you can go ahead and fill in your things. So if you look at this, this one looks like it's the opposite where the animal on the right side is bigger and this is smaller. So I'm going to go to layout. I'm going to pull in a horizontal arrangement. I'm going to make my horizontal arrangement 100 pixels tall. I'm also going to make the width 90%. So now I'm going to put in my two images. I'm going to drag in an image and an image. This image will be IMG alligator and I'm going to make it clickable. I'm going to upload my alligator picture and you can see it's overtaking that. So I'm going to make the height feel parent. What does that do? That makes the alligator the width of whatever my parent is. My parent is my horizontal arrangement. My horizontal arrangement is 100 pixels. So now this width is 100 pixels. And let's just go ahead and make the width also fill parent. So now you can see that's what I got. And if I do scalable, it scales. So now this is taking up most of the stuff, but I still have this little image here that says, hey, I need some space. Well, this, let's just do IMG tiger. And I'm going to make it clickable. I'm going to make the height fill parent. And then I'm going to upload my tiger picture. So now if you look at this, lines over here and the tear, but I want to swap that. I want to put, I want to make my alligator 100 pixels for the width. And I'm going to make my tiger fill parent. I'm going to scale that. So there kind of gives me a cool effect versus having a bunch of squares. I have the lion bigger than the this. So again, I want the little space in between here. So I'm going to drag in a label in the middle. I'm going to get rid of the text. I'm going to rename it LBL spacer two, and I'm going to make the width one pixel. So there we go. I'm going to do one more. So you can use your creativity, but I want to see in your app, you're going to have one picture is going to be using fill parent and the other is going to be 100. I want to see one on the left where it's bigger, one on the right. And then I also want you to have one more with three pictures that are going to be equal size. So again, for this horizontal arrangement, I'm going to make the height 100 pixels. I'm going to make the width 90%. And I'm also just going to get rid of the background so I don't see it on the screen. So in here, we want to have three animals. So right now we have one, two, three, four. We're going to add three more in here. I'm just going to give seven. And then you're going to do two more rows for you to able to get your 12 animals. So inside of here, I'm just going to drag in three animals, three images. And again, I can rename these, but I'm going to make it clickable. I'm going to do fill parent for the width and height. I'm going to click on my second image. I'm going to make it clickable. I'm going to make fill parent for the width and height. And and I'm gonna click on my third image. I'm gonna make it clickable. I'm gonna make it fill parent for the width and height. And you can't see it right now, but these three images widths are perfectly equal. Well, why is that? Each one of these images says fill up as much space as possible. So image one is fill parent, image two is fill parent, and image three is fill parent. So the parent is horizontal arrangement. This is saying take up the rest of the space. This is saying take up the rest of the space. This is saying take up the rest of the space. If all three things are saying take up as much space as possible, it's going to split it by the number of things. So I have three things, so it's split it into a third. Just for example, if I add another image and I do fill parent, now all of these are 25% of the entire thing. 
So you can use horizontal arrangements and fill parent to get a very unique. Let's go ahead and put in our images here. So let's say IMG Rhino, and I'm gonna select the picture. I'm gonna upload my Rhino picture, and I'm gonna scale that picture. I'm gonna do this, IMG Hippo. I'm gonna upload my picture, and I'm gonna scale my picture. And let's do IMG Bear. So now I have this. Let's do that effect where we have a little space in the middle. So I have that little separation between there that kind of shows the background. Gives me a nice little effect. So now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need to get five more pictures on this screen. So you're gonna do another row of two animals, either like this or like this, and one other row with three images at the bottom. So that's gonna be two more horizontal arrangements. But here's the thing, how can I add that down here? I cannot scroll. So if you want to actually add scrolling to your screen, you need to actually update that property. So I'm gonna scroll back up here, click on Animal Sounds, and you can see right here, there is a scrollable property. I'm gonna click Scrollable. When I do that, I'm able to scroll down. That way I can add more things to the bottom. If I turn this off, you can see I cannot scroll down. So if you ever want your screen to be scrollable, click on the name of the screen, come to Properties, and select Scrollable. Let's add in the last two horizontal arrangements. I'm gonna drag one to the very bottom, all the way to the bottom, so I see that little blue line, drop it in, and you can see it's there. And I'm gonna drag one more down here and drop it. So now you can see I have two horizontal arrangements. So now that you've uploaded your last two rows and you have your 12 animals, remember, don't forget the little spacing here. Even though it looks like there's spacing here, there's not. So I wanna have that spacing effect. So there we go, we got our kind of spacing effect. So now, the last part of the design. This is an animal sound screen. So we want to have sound. Well, we haven't added sounds to this. So let's go ahead to media. We have 12 animals, so we need to have 12 animal sound effects. But we also want to have background music. So I'm going to actually do player, and I'm going to rename it PLY, background, and I'm going to loop it, and I'm going to upload background, a different background music for the screen. So back on our class page, on Mr. Gant's Drive, you can see I have a bunch of different background sounds. So you're gonna choose a different one from your home screen, download that, and then upload it here. So for example, I already did background jumbo. I'm going to upload just a different sound. So I might want background summer. Let's... That sounds fine to me, so I'm gonna do that. Click OK, and I'm gonna obviously take this down maybe to like 15. So I have that background music for this screen, but it's not playing. Remember, we have to code it. We have not coded it yet, but I also have these 12 different animal sound effects I wanna play. So I'm going to select sound, and I'm gonna drag in 12 of these. Three, four. So now I need to actually rename these versus sound one, sound two, sound three. So when I'm coding this, I'll know exactly what I'm doing. And I'm gonna rename them based on the animals I have. So let's scroll to the bottom. Sound one, I'm just gonna do S and D, lion. Now, remember you've previously downloaded the sounds either from my drive or from free animal sounds. Now I need to actually upload that sound into the source. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm looking for lion, and there we go. The next one is a cobra, so S and D cobra. And I'm gonna come here and upload my cobra. So pause the video and go rename all your sound effects, upload the animal that goes with that sound, that animal. <laughs> So now, you should 
have just renamed all of your sound files and uploaded the source of whatever that sounds. So sound tiger matches tiger, sound rhino, sound hippo, sound bear. So you should have completed this step. Renaming all your sound files to the animals you chose and uploading the source or that sound effect. The last thing we want to do is we want our app to speak. So we're going to drag in text to speech. And we're going to add one other thing. So we won't be able to test this next feature we're going to add inside of the emulator. You'll have to test this on a real Android phone or device. Or you can use the iOS compatible emulator to actually test this. This feature is going to be the accelerometer. We're going to click on sensors and I'm going to drag this in accelerometer sensor. Accelerometer sensor understands the acceleration um, that your phone is moving. So if you're moving very fast, it also move, knows if your phone is shaking. So when Pokemon Go was a very big thing, they used the accelerometer sensor because people were playing the game while they were driving. So they used this sensor to know how fast the phone was currently moving. And if it was moving faster than a human could possibly run or walk, then it would say, hey, you should, it popped up an alert message saying, you should not be using Pokemon Go while driving. That is what the accelerometer sensor can do. What we're going to use it for is when someone shakes their phone, again, we can't test this in the emulator, but we can test it on an actual device. When someone shakes their device, we're gonna play all of these animals. All right, so that's all we have for the design. The next video, we are going to go ahead and code our app and wrap this app up.